Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how I grew my sunglasses brand. Okay, so if you don't already know, I have a sunglasses business called Own the Trend. And I started this with my husband uh, around three years ago. We were both unemployed. He was studying for his board exam for pharmacy and I was in my last year of university. So we decided let's start a business together so we could have some type of income. And it was super fun and we're still running it until now and I absolutely love it. We have three warehouses across the world and we ship worldwide, so we're super proud of it. Now, we're definitely not where I want to be just yet, but I do believe that we've had a lot of growth within the past three years. So I'm gonna share with you guys how I grew that business to become my full-time income and how I was able to quit my job so that I could just work on this full-time. But first, I want to thank Rebate.com for sponsoring this video. Rebate is a website that allows Amazon sellers to run rebate campaigns. It does all the hard work for you and rebate campaigns are very, very essential for running your Amazon store. I highly recommend it, especially when you're first launching your product because that way Amazon sees that you are getting sales. You're giving away units for free every day for two weeks and Amazon sees that you're getting sales So they rank you up to the first page for your main keywords So rebate is a great great website to do this on because they do all the hard work for you All you need to do is let them know which one your product is and which keywords you are targeting So thank you so much uh, rebate.com for sponsoring this portion of the video Number one, let's talk about marketing. So obviously when I say how to grow a business, the first thing that comes to mind is marketing the business. And this is one of the most essential pillars when it comes to your brand. Marketing and you know nailing it down and being able to get your product in the right hands. So one of the best marketing techniques that we have used for Own the Trend is influencers. The importance of influencers is like, I can't even, I don't even know where to start when it comes to this. I feel like truly the key to get your brand to blow up is to get your products in the right hands. Now, influencers are a super, super cool tool for you to use because you can give them your product and they create content for you so you don't have to create content yourself. Um, they have a following of people that trust them and people that trust their opinions. So if they like the product and if they fall in love with it, which you know, if the quality is good, then they should, um, they can share it with their followers and their followers will purchase it. So that's the amazing thing about influencers is that it's almost free marketing. Now, obviously not all of them are going to be for free. It depends on their following, how big their following is, if they accept gifting or not. It definitely depends on the influencer themselves. Let's talk about the first thing, which is how to DM an influencer. So this was how I reached out to all the influencers that we got our products to. And I'm going to insert a few pictures over here of all of the influencers that have, that have rocked our sunglasses. And this is how I got to them. So I sent them a DM that was very personable. So DMs are very important, but these influencers probably receive hundreds and hundreds of DMs a day. I'm not kidding. Hundreds of DMs a day. So what makes you stand out? Why would they open your DM? Number one, you need to address them with their name uh, and you need to make sure that you get their name right because we did this mistake a few times and we definitely had that influencer not respond to us ever again. So address them with their name and get the name right. You also want to, you know, keep it short. Keep it short and simple. No influencer has the time to open up a DM and read a huge paragraph about how much you are loving their content and obsessed with this and obsessed with that and you're so in love with them. They don't have time, they're just gonna scan through it and most probably they're just gonna swipe out of your chat. So keep it super short and simple. I just like to say, hey, um, let's say for example, the influencer's name is Sarah. Hey Sarah, um, I absolutely love your content. Uh, we are a brand that sells sunglasses uh, based in Toronto. I would love to send you a pair of sunglasses to try out. Let me know if you're interested. That's it super short and simple so you really want the message to be around two to three sentences maximum so that they're able to read through it quickly and you want them to be you want to give them the opportunity to respond back and start a conversation 
before you start DMing your influencer, make sure that your Instagram and your feed itself looks good, that your feed is aesthetically pleasing. Because before the influencer decides that they want to respond back to you, they're going to visit your Instagram and they're gonna go through your website. And if they don't see something that they like, or if they don't feel like you are professional, or you know, you have aesthetics, or your feed looks nice, or if they don't feel like your feed aligns with their brand, then they're just not going to respond to you. So the number one thing you want to work on is your Instagram feed and then start reaching out to influencers. Definitely do not expect any influencers to respond to you if you only have two or three pictures up, uh, if your Instagram feed does not look good, if it's not aesthetically pleasing, then do not expect anybody to respond to you. So work on that first and then reach out to influencers. Now, how to find more of them? There are hundreds and thousands of influencers in the US. How do you find more of them? So when you reach an influencer that you feel like goes with your brand, there's going to be an arrow uh, at the right of their following and message buttons. There's going to be an arrow that points down. Click on that arrow and it's going to pull up a list of Instagram pages that are similar to this influencer, whether this influencer is following them or whether they are following this influencer or they just have similar followers. So Instagram feels like they have similar content. Definitely go through that list and repeat the process. So the last thing when it comes to marketing that I wanted to address is branding. Branding is super important, especially when it comes to your logo, to your brand name, your colors, your aesthetic, everything like that. You want to make sure that everything that you are doing is on brand so that when a customer thinks of your brand name, they kind of have an image of what your vibe is and you know what your textures are, what your colors are. So you definitely want to stay on brand. This is very important. It keeps you looking very professional, especially in an influencer's eyes you look very professional when you have consistent branding now the next thing that I would say really helped my business grow is keeping a hold of our inventory management inventory management is super important because you know if you make a mistake in this then you can easily either lose a lot of money or you know you could be stuck with a lot of inventory so speaking of stuff with a lot of inventory my first point when it comes to inventory management is making sure you are not uh, expanding your collection too quickly so this is a huge mistake because you don't want all of your money tied up in inventory and this is something that we had to go through with our brand as well since we are sunglasses and sunglasses is a super trendy item so there's always new styles coming out uh, we at some point got caught up in the wheel of you know launching new styles new styles new styles and not having any core products that we continue to restock and we know our customers love even our core products at some point we were no longer restocking and we just wanted to get in new products so it's really finding that balance between having your basics uh, one or like let's say for example two or three styles that are your basic styles that you are constantly restocking and you know your customers love and will come back and repurchase and then also having a few more styles that are trendy, that are new and in fashion, and then maybe these don't get restocked as often because they're a bit more trendy, but you are still keeping them in your collection so that you constantly have new and fresh styles going on. So make sure you are watching your numbers. You know, your numbers are very important. Business is all about numbers. So make sure you're able to read your numbers and know how to improve on them. Understand what those numbers are. Like, for example, if you're not getting enough sales, then understand how to improve your sales and how to improve your conversion rates. Why are you not getting enough sales? Is it because your website is not converting? That means your customers are not uh, gravitating towards your website. Maybe you need to fix something with your homepage. Maybe you need to create a pop-up discount or a pop-up offer. So conversion is all about the website itself. Maybe the products are not laid out in a nice way where the customer feels enticed to click on them and purchase it. Maybe the description is not really catching the customer's eyes. Another tip that I would have is work on your collections one to two seasons ahead. This is kind of hard when it comes to uh, your business, especially when you're first starting out, because you have to predict the trends, you know, the colors that are going to be in fashion in the next season. So it's actually not that easy, but if you could do it, and if you can watch the fashion shows that come out, you know, fashion shows usually come out one season ahead. So watch those fashion shows and read some articles, the Vogue articles, they always talk about what are the colors and the 
textures that are going to be in fashion in the next season so that you're able to work on your collection ahead of time so you have enough time to do your photo shoot and do your marketing campaigns and actually come out with a really strong collection. So my next point is hiring the right people and this truly is the difference between running a small business and actually running a company, a business that is able to grow and expand into different countries. So when you're running a small business usually that means you are a one woman show or a one man show, you are doing everything yourself and I'm seeing you know a lot of these trends on TikTok where people are showing where they do everything themselves and that's amazing. Honestly that phase is so much fun. But at some point, you begin to grow so much that you're not able to do everything on your own. You simply just don't have time. So you have to start delegating tasks that, you know, you have to look at it as the 80-20 rule, where 20% of the tasks that you are doing are creating 80% of your revenue. So the smaller tasks that you feel like are not creating so much revenue for you, it's good to delegate those out to other people that can do a good job at them so that you are able to focus your time on the bigger tasks. Like for example, for me, my bigger tasks would be choosing out the collection, um, you know, making sure that I'm keeping up with the trends, with the marketing, uh, just creative, creative tasks. So, uh, you know, time consuming tasks for me would be customer service, for example. I definitely don't have time to sit on my phone and answer all of the DMs that we are getting on our Instagrams, all of the emails, but they are very important. So that's why we hired somebody to make sure that their job is to answer these customers, is to make sure that they are happy because customer experience is very, very important for our brand. We need to make sure that our customers are satisfied with our products and that their issues are being solved in a timely manner. So you hire somebody to do that and that way it's off my own plate and I can focus on other tasks that will grow the brand as well. A lot of people I know are hesitant usually when it comes to hiring uh, a team for your business because if you feel like you're spending money on something that you could do yourself or sometimes you feel like you're spending money on something that you could do a better job at. But hiring somebody will make you more money in the future. Again, this goes back to my point of it gives you time to do bigger tasks that you should be doing that grow your business while your team is focusing on the other tasks that you simply just wouldn't have otherwise have time for. Now the last point that I have with this is hire slow and fire fast. Now this is something that I think everybody learns the hard way. You definitely don't do this at the beginning. I still haven't seen a case of somebody that has done this when they very first started their business but take it from me, hire slow and fire fast. Meaning making sure that when you are hiring somebody, you are really screening them well. You're making sure that this person can do a better job than you at this task. Uh, so really screen them, you know, interview them, give them projects to do just to make sure that they are the correct fit and fire fast. So as soon as you feel like they're not a good fit, if they're unprofessional, if they're just not doing a good job or you know giving you good results, you definitely have to look at results when it comes to hiring a team so that you can make sure that these people are actually doing a good job. So if they're not giving you results, then fire fast. You don't have time for that. Just move on to the next one and start the hiring process again because this will make you lose money in the future if you are just holding on to a team member that is just not pulling their strings. Next is you have to spend money to make money. Again, I learned this the hard way. So especially, you know, when we were still a small business, we wanted to save every penny that we could because, you know, we wanted to pay ourselves. Uh, we really wanted to be able to quit our jobs and do this full time. So I didn't want to spend money on anything else except for paying myself and my inventory. And that was it. I wanted to do all the photo shoots myself, all the product pictures myself. I really wanted to save money where I could. But this did hurt us in the long run because spending money on marketing and spending money on photo shoots and ads, this is what builds your brand image and this is what really elevates your brand image so that you're able to sell your product at a higher price point so that you're able to build up your, your product's reputation and attract the right customer base that you want to attract. Eventually, this money will make itself back and more but you need to spend it at the beginning. You cannot make more money if you are holding on to all of your budget for yourself. You need to keep 
um, fueling back into the business and spending back into the business so that you're able to pull more money out of it. The last thing that I would say really, really helped us grow our business is having a very strong customer service team. Now, customer service is super important. To be honest, like word of mouth is actually one of the most marketing tools that you could ever take advantage of. And the only way that you're going to be able to take advantage of word of mouth is if you have good customer service. Meaning if somebody receives a damaged product, if somebody is having trouble navigating through your website, they need to be able to speak to somebody that is able to help them out in a timely manner so that they can actually go ahead and uh, go through with the purchase or be able to get the product they wanted or resolve their issue in general. So make sure you're investing in your customer service team or if you don't have time for it, hire a customer service representative. You could hire a virtual assistant that can help you with customer service. You have many options with all different types of budgets, uh, but definitely, definitely prioritize customer service. This is very important because making your customer feel like they are important and they are heard is one of the biggest pillars of your business that you really need to take care of. So these are all of the main points that I have for how I grew my sunglasses brand. Now, again, there is obviously way more to this and way more to this topic. So I would love to do more videos about, you know, growing my sunglasses brand and my journey on that. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what else you would want to know about, you know, starting an e-commerce store or what else you would want to know about my personal experience with my brand. I would love to share more with you guys. So if you like this, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel and I'm going to see you guys next week. Bye.